here we have everything we need to hook up. We have the Raspberry Pi. This is the Model B. And we're going to connect this to the Grove Pi from Dexta Industries. And this basically is an extension of the 28 GPI O pins. And they connect together and it seats perfectly a little snug and you just kind of push it down firmly without trying to bend to break those pins. I had this old uh, RPI case and it's not going to fit because uh, I got the extension board on top of it, but I can put the bottom of the RPI in there and it's going to give me a nice seat in order to work. And you can see with the extension board, it really doesn't fit, but at least it's going to insulate from the bottom. Uh, this is a, an Edimax, a little uh, mini or nano Wi-Fi dongle that goes in the lower USB, and that's going to give us internet connectivity and connection to the Wi-Fi. Here's the RPI disk image that we downloaded from Dexta Industries, and we compiled and loaded on. So this is an HDMI to VGA adapter. Most people have a monitor lying around, not necessarily a... TV so I just picked this up so that I can connect it to uh, one of my old monitors and that plugs in the HDMI port on the back of the Raspberry Pi all right and this is a powered USB hub and I like to use this because uh, there's only two USB ports on the Raspberry Pi B so this will allow me to connect my keyboard and mouse uh, we'll just run this around uh, to the back. Hardest problem with everything in these projects is trying to keep your cables under control. So it plugs right into the back there, and then that acts as a USB extender. So now that I have an extender, I can take my mouse and I can plug that in there. And I'll just throw that in the back. Uh, all right, and that's one. And then I can plug my keyboard in. And uh, again, we'll just we'll neaten up with the cables later, maybe. Okay, we'll plug that in there. Um, so what I like about the powered USB hub is now I can power the RPI from the same hub. So that goes in there. And this is the micro uh, USB port that powers the... Uh, Raspberry Pi and that goes in the back like so and as soon as I do this it's gonna go over to the monitor uh, and it's gonna boot up so I'm gonna just uh, do some updates on it once it loads up and then I'll show you how to connect the uh, uh, Grove uh, relay switch and the Grove ultrasonic sensor Great. So by now, you've had a chance to uh, take a look at the GUI that's provided on the custom uh, disk image from Dexter Industries. Uh, it's very simple. It's very easy to do. I've provided a couple of screenshots uh, to show you how to get connected to the Wi-Fi um, and then also how to upgrade. Immediately off the bat, we saw that there was a firmware update for the Grove Pi. We also saw that uh, the Raspbian disk image that were built off of, uh, that's Jesse, that required an update. And also Dexter Industries updated their GUI and it went from Python 2.7.9 to Python 3. So that was easy. It did take a little bit of a time for the Raspberry Pi to download it and compile it. But now that we're up and running, it's time to connect our uh, relay and our sensor. Uh, each one comes in a little package and what I like about these little bits is that they're under five dollars a piece. So this is what's going to be doing the bulk of our work. This is a high voltage relay and it's going to switch 250 volts 10 amps AC with a three to five volt DC current. And so the Raspberry Pi is running off of direct current DC. And we're going to plug this into D2 
on the Grove Pi. Since the Grove Pi is now managing our GPU I.O. pins, we can plug these in um, without having to turn off the Raspberry Pi. Uh, before, uh, you would have to turn it off every time you were plugging in and out of the uh, GPIO pin. So the Pi doesn't necessarily start up that quickly, and it did cause, uh, you know, some delays. Here's the ultrasonic sensor. Uh, it's two speakers and microphones, so it sends out a signal. Signal bounces back. Uh, this one is a variable sensor, so you can actually set the distance in centimeters. Must be a, a, a European thing. Uh, of how far in front of the sensor you want it to work. And this one plugs into the D4 patch right there. So now we've got the sensor hooked up. We've got the relay hooked up. Um, I've demonstrated the program and given you an example of the program that I'm going to use that's going to define which sensor is at which relay, what distance in front of the ultrasonic sensor uh, that is actually going to trigger the relay, and I'm going to run the program now because this comes with a little LED light and we'll be able to actually see it uh, turn on and turn off. Let me just click over here and run that program that I provided in the tutorial. All right, so you did see the little LED light turn on. Right now, it's set to 20 centimeters. So if we back up from 20 centimeters, after our uh, time sleep duration expires at 20 seconds, that little LED light will turn off. And it does. If you have motion again in front of it, we can see it turns on again. Uh, now, 20 centimeters is not that far. For the full-size room, I'm probably going to do about 150 centimeters. But for just right now, testing, uh, we can see that the program is functioning as it's supposed to function. So we can move to the next step, which is going to be to hook this, uh, the little screw terminal here, up to uh, a cord so that we can plug in a lamp. And then once we'll do that, we'll actually test it with high voltage, plugging it into our plug strip here and then powering a light and that's going to be the very next step.